Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome to FAIR TV. Let's look at what was in the news this past week. Occupy Wall Street, of course, was back in the news, celebrating its one-year anniversary, and the corporate media picked up where they left off, diminishing the activism and declaring the movement dead. That's exactly what New York Times columnist Joe Nocera did on September 15th. He did admit that Occupy had some impact. In Nocera's world, we weren't interested in a lot of the issues that Occupy brought forward. We shrugged off manufacturing jobs as they disappeared. We didn't care much about Wall Street's mercenary trading culture. Who is this we, exactly? The star business reporter at the Times, Andrew Ross Sorkin, had a piece headlined, Occupy Wall Street, a frenzy that fizzled. And he got right to the point. Occupy, quote, will be an asterisk in the history books if it gets a mention at all, close quote. He ticked off the big ways in which Occupy Wall Street had no impact. There are no new big banking regulations. There were no Wall Street prosecutions. We did not know that that was in Occupy's power, nor are we familiar with radical social justice movements. They get all their work done in just one year. Sorkin even wrote this, quote, in the fall of 2011, questioning anything about the movement was not too popular. Doing so was an invitation for withering ridicule, close quote. Actually, it was mostly the other way around. Pundits and tabloids lined up to bash Occupy Wall Street for being underinformed, drug addicted, you name it. The notion that it took some kind of bravery to bash Occupy Wall Street is pretty silly but it's exactly the kind of attitude you'd expect from someone who's so chummy with Wall Street CEOs. On September 16th, news broke that a NATO airstrike killed eight women in eastern Afghanistan as they were collecting firewood. Attacks that kill Afghans, accidental or not, tend to be covered quietly, with the focus not on the killing, but on the political ramifications. So the news was reported, barely, in the New York Times in a story headlined, Karzai Denounces Coalition Over Airstrikes. The Times mentioned that the Afghan president's words were likely to rankle some Western officials. So much for the dead women. And this Washington Post headline shows which lives the paper considered most important. On ABC World News, more time was spent discussing how Britain's Prince Harry could have been hurt in the Taliban attack on a NATO base. One has to wonder whether, if not for the deaths of these U.S. service members around the same time, the women's deaths would have made the news at all. With all the talk of Muslim rage in the corporate media this week, the failure to acknowledge these deaths is quite revealing. And finally, there is a familiar pattern to reporting on domestic terrorism if the alleged perpetrator is Muslim. The story is given top billing. The plot is made to sound frightening and deadly. And then we learn that there was never much danger at all. The suspect was found on the internet making threats, which led law enforcement to encourage the suspect to act out his terrorist fantasy, even providing him guidance and phony weapons. The headlines should read something like, FBI breaks up FBI terror plot. Well, here's the latest example from the September 14th NBC Nightly News. This led their newscast. Good evening on what has already been a week of high anxiety for this country with the 9-11 anniversary and anti-American violence overseas. There's late word tonight that the FBI has exposed an apparent homegrown terror plot in Chicago involving an American teenager. The feds arresting an 18-year-old man who they say tried to detonate a car bomb outside a Chicago bar. So there you have it, 9-11, anxiety, anti-American violence around the world. To be clear, NBC did acknowledge that the FBI was directing the action in this plot all along. So why is this anyone's idea of a lead story on a newscast? That's hard to fathom, but it's worth remembering another media pattern. If the suspect wasn't identified as Muslim and was actually working on an actual terror plot, well, that hardly would have been news at all. This was Fair TV. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for joining us this week.